the Dynasty Man League grind in 365. Yo, what's going on, fellas? This your boy, The Bus. And we got another episode of Dynasty Prime Time. Y'all know what time it is, man. And I got the homie OG Chris Murray in the house. What's up, man? What's going on, man? Another show, Dynasty Prime Time. Let's get the people what they want, man. Let's get into it. Hey, let's give them what they want, man. Y'all know right now the, the DML is in the off season. We got um resign period coming on. Free agency about to pop open. I know the trade's gonna be gonna be hot. The DM's gonna be on fire. So we're gonna bring y'all a quick mock draft of the top 10 picks and who we think gonna go where. So Hey, let's start off with the Indianapolis Colts, and I have them picking your home, your homie from Tennessee, Armand Mosley. I think this will be a, a real good pick for him to solidify that blind side for. Um, I think his quarterback is is Brissett right now, so I think this I think this old lineman will, will be really good to to get that old line stable and one piece. What, what you think, OG? I think then with this pick, you know, looking at the Colts this season, uh, one thing that stood out was they didn't have no pass rush. You know, they finished the season ranked 31st, uh, you know, and getting after the quarterback in the DML, only getting a total of 39 sacks. So I think with this pick, you know, he could go either or, but I think he should address the front four and that uh, on the defensive side of the ball. And his guy in this draft will have to be Bradley Jones out of Wisconsin, you know, at the right end position. This was a guy at Wisconsin that showed that he could be the first to be working with, and I think flat out from the gate, he, can shoot. he will be produced. He definitely will produce over there in Indianapolis. They don't have nobody else that's willing to step up right now that's, that's showing any form of talent that they can get after the quarterback. Gotcha. So, either, either way he go, man, if he goes with the offensive line or if he goes with the defensive line, he's going to make a real solid pick here. This is where you need to start building your teams, man. I I, I didn't really want to let that slip out, but um, <laughs> either way, it, it, it'll, it'll be a good no pick. Free chicken. No free chicken, hey, yo, no that, free that's chicken. That's it. No no more KFC, Popeyes, or whatever. You can cook your own chicken, too. Uh, but, hey, let's, let's go ahead and move on to pick nine. And we got the Seattle Seahawks. Now, um, the pick that I have here is... Jonathan Mackins, the QB from Alabama, man. I think this would be a, a solid pick for the Seahawks, seeing that he will not have Russell Wilson this season. So you got to get somebody in there who, who can be a franchise, a face of the franchise, and, and lead this organization in the in the right right in the right track. What you think? Yeah, I'm as agree with you on this pick, man. I, I definitely think uh, he goes quarterback. And I think the guy out of Alabama is the guy to go with. You know, he landed last year a, a game changer, flat out beast wide receiver in the draft. And this year, I think he has to go quarterback just to build that chemistry up, you know, because whether guys want to believe it or not, high state will be here before you know it. You know, so I think that we have to get a quarterback in there that can pretty much lead you deep into a good playoff run come high season. I think this is the guy that he should go with. Right. Okay. You you mentioned that he he drafted Bass last year, who's a speedster. Mm -hmm. I mean, can flat out run. So when you look at Jonathan Mackins, he's a West Coast quarterback. Some of these West Coast quarterbacks don't have that strong arm that he may need to get Bass the ball if he's running that nine or that or that deep post. Do you mm -hmm. think this will work out for him? Yeah, I think I think if he if he come if he sit down and actually laugh and come up with a solid game plan, I think how how that guy that is, is built right now, man, he's gonna get the ball no matter who's back there. No matter who's back there throwing the ball to him, you know he's yeah. gonna get it. He just has to figure out and come up with a scheme that fits the play style for the quarterback, also for the wide receiver. But I, he shouldn't struggle just off of the tricks that Bass has. Right. He's going to get him the ball. He just has to get creative with figuring out how to give him the ball. He just can't depend on just throwing the ball deep train all game. He has to get creative, get some skip. Matter of fact, let me be quiet. No free chicken. He got to figure that out himself. Hey, he he's going to have to go to go to his offense coordinator and figure that out. So you, yeah. you're not going you're not going to learn that on this Dynasty Prime Time show. So let's um let's move on to number eight and we and coming in at number eight we got the Washington Redskins. Now you know I like the offensive line, so I got him picking. 
your boy from Florida State, Connor Gentry. Um, I know he still has Trent Williams on there, but if you look at his old line, he has about two or three weak areas that he may need to address. And with this pick, he can solidify that. So what, what, what do you think about this pick? This, he, this he, has to, he, had, he, had, he has to go, you know, all, all year round. You know, he, he was basically pretty much saying, you know, he was in the uh, trade room looking for O-line, for O-line. And I think I'm going to have to agree with you on this one also. He has to go O-line, you know. And uh, Gentry is the guy that I think will fit his system out there in Washington. You know, because he gave up a total last season, a total, you see, everybody listen to me, a total of 85 sacks. Right. 85 sacks in one season. That's 15 sacks away from 100. <laughs> <laughs> Is he giving out any 50 piece of nuggets on this show today? Because we need to <laughs> ship him out of box ASAP. Hey. <laughs> it, it's tough being a quarterback out there in Washington. So yeah. I think he definitely has to address the uh, offensive line. And I think that's his guy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really tough, and you got to protect Alex Smith, and you got to find some lanes for my man Groose to run the ball, man. He, he has a great running back, you know, mm-hmm. in, in the backfield, so you don't want him, you don't want that talent to be wasted. Now, do you think he will make this pick, though? Because, you know, a lot of people don't like making that that ugly offensive line pick. They, they want to get the, the skilled players, the, the, the fast wide receivers and, and the running backs. Do you think his um do you think he'll be swayed by some of the top talent in those other skill positions? Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, a, a guy like uh he has to be a real disciplined GM slash owner because you know the holes that you need to fill. But once those combine numbers drop, you'll be like, All right, I know I need an offensive line, but this wide receiver right here. Right. You know, so we have to be a, a real disciplined GM slash owner that you, you gotta you gotta understand the image and the picture that you're trying to paint for your team. You just gotta stick to it, you know. But you never know when the draft because somebody might jump your pick and take the play that you plan to take. So you you know you just you just gotta hope and just pray that all the chips fall in your favor. Gotcha, gotcha, and you make some real valid points. So let's move on to pick seven. And coming in here is the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this is where me and you, you know, had two different picks. You had Bradley Jails going to the Colts. Mm-hmm. I got Bradley Jails going to the Eagles because I feel like he needs to address the O-line. I mean, not O-line, I'm sorry. His defensive end with, um, with, with Graham getting get aging. I think Graham is mm-hmm. like 32 now. So I think that'll be a solid pick for him. Well, we all know Matty Ice, so I don't know what he's going to do with this pick. So I'm, I'm going to let you chime in and, 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 and tell me where you think he might go. Looking at this Philadelphia Eagles team, you know, uh, Matty, Matty's a user. Uh, I think he made his he made his big splash last year in the draft. So he's definitely this year. I don't think he's drafting. He's definitely going to trade this pick away. And uh, pretty much Kyle be a motherfucker. I'm just telling you that right now. <laughs> Man, this is going to happen. I'm, t- I'm, just, I'm, I'm just telling you this is going to happen. You know, um, he's a GM uh, slash owner that he understands He understands the game. He understands that it doesn't take a whole lot of talent on either side of the ball for you to win games. You know, you got to put guys with certain traits in certain spots and get top production out of them. And Matty understands that. So I think this pick is definitely getting traded. Uh, now, who it goes to? You know, we want to wait to figure it out come draft year, but I, this pick is definitely getting traded. Yeah, well, it's we all know it's going to be somebody that's that's going to probably be in the top five next season. Mm-hmm. I, we, I think we can guarantee that. I mean, we we know how Matty Ice trade, man. Him and KP went to the same school. They make the same type of trade. <laughs> and they, hey, every time they talk, I have my notepad and I take my notes, and I think it might help me this season. So we gonna see, but. Hey man, let's let's move on to pick six, and this your homie Nasty Newt coming in with the Falcons. Now, me and you both know how Newt likes to build his team. It's there's no disguising that, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So I I have him picking the right guard from Ole Miss, Henry Sweek. Um, hey, I I really think this pick would help him solidify his O line as well. Um, he has a few. 
weak areas. I think he still has Jake Matthews. Um, he also picked a guard or a tackle for Oklahoma last year. So mm-hmm. he, he he may go another route. I, I don't know. He may get tired of picking those over lines and go to the D line. So what do you think? Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you. He definitely has to uh, address the over line outside of Alex Mack. It's really no one, you know, out there that's pretty much protecting Matty Ice. Uh, Matty Ice was sacked 53 times last season. That's not even including the quarterback there. Now, I do say that he go O line, but the O lineman I have him taking is Armin Mosley out of Tennessee. You know, this okay. was a guy, man. He was a workforce out there in Tennessee. Pretty much, some people compared him to Michael Orr. You know, so I definitely think that the thing, the, the type of scheme that Nasty Luke runs out there in Atlanta, it's a well balanced scheme. You know, it's a run, he got a strong run game, and he also has a solid passing game. So I think that this guy would definitely fit into that scheme come day one. Okay, so he, you, so Henry Sweet is a day one starter. So, no, I, mm-hmm. so Henry Sweet comes in, takes somebody position, somebody's mad, and he's out there just. <laughs> giving out pancakes. Hey, what? Hey, what I call pan? If you ever watching the game, you see a pancake. Hey, this how I, this how I, aha. That's all. That's that's all you gonna see is aha going on with these top linemen coming off the board so early. So, hey, let's 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 keep it moving, man. Hey, now we moving on to the Cleveland Browns. Now this is my co-host team. So, I'm gonna tell you who I think he's gonna pick. He'll tell me if I'm wrong or I'm right. But. As we all know, he traded away um, my man Baker Mayfield, but he also drafted a, a quarterback named Groves. I got him picking another quarterback because I don't think he can rely on that younger guy who is not that good, but he's making him good. I got him picking the Alexander. Hey, y'all, y'all gonna have to help me with his name, Alexander Mukowski <laughs> out of Miami. He's a West Coast quarterback, so. What you got for me, OG? Uh, I, I, I like I like I like my young quarterback man that I drafted last year. Now, uh, the reason why he 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 struggled in some areas where he struggled, of course, you know we lack you know some talent at the wide receiver position. Uh, but our O line was horrible, man. Our 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 O line was horrible, and with this pick, I'm definitely looking to address that. And I got me taking Henry Sweet from Ole Miss. You know, this is a guy, man, that uh, we watch film on. And, you know, we all, our scouting guys, sit down at the table and talk, you know, time after time. And we like this guy. We want to bring him out to Cleveland, man, and have him as a day one starter come next year's season. Okay. Well, well you you pick before Nuke, so you can, you can get him if you, if, if you want him. You know what I'm saying? So, next up, we got the Oakland Raiders down there in the black hole, man. Um, I, I peeped his roster, and I got him picking EJ Gray from Florida State. This this guy's a field general, so he can go from side to side, left to right, up and down. He, he's gonna follow you everywhere on the field. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a, is a position that he really needs, and could take him over the top. You know what I'm saying? What, what do you, what do you think about my man EJ Gray from Florida State? You, you know, I. I, I... I, I think, you know, he's definitely good, you know, uh, but if you watch Tone, uh, he doesn't he doesn't need a linebacker, in my uh-huh. opinion. I think that with his secondary, the way how it is, you know, and, and, and Father Tom is catching up to that secondary, you know, he 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 has to address it. He's in a division when he faces Tyree Kill twice a year. He right. faces Keenan Allen twice a year. And he got JB and those Denver Broncos who love to pass the ball. So right. he has to address his secondary. And I think Daniel McLean, cornerback out of UCLA, is the guy that he has to get. I think this is the guy that he has to go get. If he plans on continuing to be, you know, I'm not going to sit there and jump way ahead of myself and say he's going to fall off the mat. But if he plans on taking that div- division, He's going to have to address that secondary, and I think this is the time to do it now because he's getting a solid cornerback who showed that UCLA that he can potentially be a shutdown corner, whether it's you putting him in zone coverage or you putting him in man coverage. He showed that he can produce at either or. So I think this is the way that he needs to go. Yeah, I mean, you 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 made a great point being that he has to face 
Tyreek Hill and Kenny Allen, and we already we already know how KP likes to throw the ball in the air to Tyreek. You know, similar to how the Browns throw to John Ross. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that that I can see him making that pick. I can see him making that pick. You know, but at the same time, I mean, I like to get pressure. I think pressure bust pipes. But we'll see, and we'll see the direction that that tone goes with these Oakland Raiders, man. So let's keep it moving on to the Tennessee Titans. That's my man, Darkness, who never came out of the dark this season. He's he's still in the dark. Yeah. I mean, well, me and you kind of swap right here. I had the Titans picking picking Daniel McLean, cornerback out of UCLA. He's a zone corner, and the reason mm-hmm. I had him picking that guy was because. If you look at the Titans cornerbacks, they're aging a little bit, but the best one he has is Jackson. So I think if you get a a, a counterpart to him, you can kind of solidify your secondary. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's just my that's my opinion. So I'm, I'm gonna let you shoot yours and, and see what happens. Yeah, you know he can, that definitely a solid pick for him also. But if you look at this Tennessee Titans team, yeah. you know uh, they they couldn't stop the run this year. You know, they couldn't stop the run. And the number one reason for that, the front four is solid. Don't get me wrong. They're solid. But once a guy got past that front four, there was no one else, you know, to sit up there and, and stop the run. So I think with this pick, I have him taking E.J. Gray from uh, F- FSU. This okay. is the guy I have him going to because this is the guy at Florida State showed that he could be that field general. And he, whether it's... Watching him on take drop back and coverage to defend a tight end or defend the route, getting after the quarterback or shooting even the gap, stopping the run uh, running play. You know, this is a guy that I think that Darkness has to get if he plans on potentially stepping his defensive game up to another level because the secondary isn't a problem in Tennessee. You know, they, they got some young studs out there at, in the secondary position, but they don't have no linebacker on paper or even on the field that, you know, is even raising an eyebrow. So I think that, you know, EJ Gray is definitely a guy that he has to get. Right. It, th- that would be a that would be a solid pick for him. But we also remember last year he, he drafted Strongy mm-hmm. out of Georgia who could play well, he came out of Georgia as a as an outside linebacker, but I I think many view him as a D N. And mm-hmm. he also has Harold out of Boston College. So if he gets EJ Gray, man, he could really solidify that linebacker core. So yeah, I can see why you know you select the EJ Gray going to ten- going to Tennessee. That that probably would be a great pick for him. So, hey, darkness, hey, come out the light, watch, <laughs> watch this show because we we giving you some good tips of where you might need to select on with that pick three. But mm-hmm. hey, we're not gonna stay on Tennessee all day. We're going to move on to number two, and that's the Buffalo Bills. And I have him selecting left outside linebacker Deron Graves from Tennessee. And, man, I, the, the reason I picked this guy was because I like that he has Tremont Edmonds, he has Shaq Lawson, and mm-hmm. I think this guy right here would just add to and, and make that linebacker core complete. They're already talented. Mm-hmm. The secondary is pretty decent because you got White back there on, on, you know, at the number one corner. So I, I just think this guy right here would really help the, the defense. I mean, he needs help in more places as well, but he only has one one first first round pick. So what what do you think, OG? I gotta agree with you on this, man. I think definitely you gotta go outside linebacker, and I think Darian Groot is his guy. You know, uh, this is a guy, man, that. Down there at Tennessee showed that, you know, he was a beast. And if you could just imagine, just imagine it. Can, can, pairing him up with Tremaine Edmonds, ooh, oh, man, this this would be nasty. This, 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 yes. this could potentially this could potentially put him definitely ahead of the pack out there in that division. Because he's he's a division, whether you want to believe it or not. A Father Tom is in that division heavy. Yeah. You know, and there's users in that division that that's pretty much winning because their stick skills are just on another level, on another level. Right. But he definitely can can start making some splashes in his draft and 
put his team and potentially in a race to win that division, you know. But I think, man, this, he has to make this pick, you know. Like, can you just imagine that? Oh, man. Hey. This would be a nasty duo if he, if he can lock this pick in. But, you know, he definitely has to – I think he go this, this route. Yeah, Tremaine Edmonds and, 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 and my man Graves, man. Golly, bro. Yo, I can just imagine, is, like, like what side you going to run to? You know what I'm saying? Yo, and, and this is a guy, man, I'm telling you, every time he, when you, if you watch his tape out there in Tennessee, he was a guy that, he wanted, every time he tried to make a tackle, he wanted to go through you. <laughs> you know, he, every time he made a tackle, if you go watch his main film, like he just wanted to go through the the uh, offensive player every single time. So I think this will be a crazy pick, man. He could bring that that um out there to the uh, Tennessee Titans defense. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, and hey, that's that's enough with number two. We're gonna see what, what what the Buffalo do with that number two pick. But let's move on to the most intriguing pick of this entire season and last season. And that's mm-hmm. the Dallas Cowboys and. Hey, he has the number one pick. He he can go in any direction he wants, but I have him picking Bennett Claybrooks, quarterback out of Florida State. Hey, this guy is a monster, talented quarterback. Knows every defense. You can't you can't out disguise him. He mm-hmm. knows what he knows where the bliss is coming from. He knows the hot reads. But I don't know what's going to happen if he goes to Dallas. So, you tell me. This, this, this right here, I'm telling, I'm telling you right now. Like, no matter what you deserve, the, uh, having a number one overall pick is, is so much pressure. It know, is. It, 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 it's, it's because you don't want to make the wrong selection, and that player is not what he was hyped up to be. You know, you don't want to you don't want to go out there and, and you know, Feed it to the uh, bull crap like an Adam Morrison, and then you draft him, then he dead pop. You know, right. so it's so, it's so much pressure. But if we look at the Dallas Cowboys team, and, uh, you already knew what was coming. You know, it was the the ball the ball was feed the ball was being fed to Ezekiel Elliott. You know, whether it was on that the dumb or out route, you know, or the flat. So all you had to do was just eliminate that and then just stack the box. You know, I think with this pick. He has, he has to go with Joseph Myers, wide receiver out of Clemson. Now, there's to be rumors that Hall, DML Hall of Famer wide receiver Rashard McKinnon is this guy mentor. As we all know, Mr. McKinnon was a force to be reckoned with, man, when he was oh, in the DML. A beast. So, I definitely think, you know, this 30th, this Cowboys uh, offense who finished 30th, and the DML last season can definitely use firepower with him because now when you get someone like him, it opens your offense up. You know, it gets other guys open because a user has to focus in on this guy, you know. And at Clemson, he was a flat-out beast, man. He was a flat-out beast, you know. And I think that HBO going in this direction will put his team ahead of the pack in the NFC East, you know. But we will see come draft day. Yeah, we'll 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 see what HBO does with this pick. I I, I mean, just like you say, you know, um, having that first overall pick, it's it's a lot of pressure on you. But I think this is really a a safe pick. Either either the quarterback from Florida State, Clay Brooks, or the wide receiver from Clemson Meyer. I mean, he he can't go wrong with any with any pick. So HBO, if you don't want nobody picking at you or you know getting on you about your draft on shows, hey, make a safe pick, man. Then you won't have to worry about nobody until the end of the season when you're two and fourteen instead of one and fifteen. So <laughs> we'll see what happens then. So, what, what, I, I, so go ahead, Chris. I, I, I think, man, like you said, like you just mentioned, it's a safe pick. You go either or, but you know. <laughs> Hey, we we all know how the D-mail is, man. Yeah, man. We, we <laughs> hey, we hey, they, they they smell blood and it's over. Yeah, the draft is gonna be very exciting, man. The DML, man. I'm telling guys, y'all better tune into that draft, man. It's gonna be very entertaining, man. Yeah. So you know, OG just missing the draft. Um, the DML draft is Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, we have a lot of you know events leading up to that day, man, with scouting, um, trades. 
free agency. So I think we're all really excited. We just had a great Super Bowl where a man 85 for the Saints won the Super Bowl. So it's, it's draft time, fellas. So with yeah, that being said, for, man, for getting over that hump, man, and getting that banner, man. Yeah, he finally got over the hump, man, and he got that banner. He had a tough game against those Niners. Came in and, and faced the Jets and finally got him a banner, man, that he can hang up. Or like expert and my man Eddie Force posting in the chat 24/7. <laughs> so we, we'll we'll never forget who has won the Super Bowl in the last few seasons, man. But um, anything else you want to say, OG? No, man, that's it, man. Great show, man. Glad to be happening on Dynasty Prime Time, man. Yo, this is another episode of Dynasty Prime Time. Make sure y'all tune in to all the other shows. Subscribe to the DML Network. And on that note, we out.